Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be diving into Premiere Pro and we're gonna be taking this clip from this to this, just like that. We are gonna be color grading this clip and this is one of my favorite clips that I just shot from my trip to Egypt, which was incredible. Now I know Premiere Pro color grading isn't the most advanced and it's not the easiest thing to do, but in today's video, I'm gonna be running you through my entire workflow from start to finish to hopefully break down, break through a few barriers for you. So without further ado, let's dive into Premiere Pro Let's get this video started. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and of course, this is the clip we're working with. All I've done is nested it and put warp stabilizer on it to make it look a little something like this. So this is just some random guy on the street who looked incredibly, incredibly cinematic. And uh, yeah, we are gonna be color grading him to make him look like the cinematic masterpiece he truly is. So to be honest with you, in my day-to-day -day workflow, all I would do is add one of my cinematic LUTs to this shot. I would make a few changes if and where I needed to and be done with it. But of course, that isn't super helpful for you if you wanna be understanding exactly how to color grade. But if you do wanna save yourself a stack of time and get the exact looks that I have in my videos, you can go and check out the uh, second link in the description, which will be my cinematic LUTs. You can use this code at checkout for a cheeky little discount and you'll be on your way. But if you do want to understand my exact color grading workflow, and even if you do pick the LUTs up, this is still really good to understand. We're about to dive in. Okay, so first things first, of course, this was shot in log on my Canon R5C. Now I'm not gonna be using a conversion LUT here. I'm gonna be doing pretty much the conversion myself. I'm gonna make sure my screen is full brightness as that can honestly be such a hindrance when you are color grading. So first things first, I'm gonna open up my Lumetri scopes here. And this was pretty much nailed in regards to exposure. I've got nothing super high and I've got nothing super low to give us a really big range to start playing around with the contrast. So first things first, I'm gonna be dropping those shadows and I'm gonna be increasing these highlights. Now, I don't want to be increasing the highlights too much because I don't want here, here, or here on these little tins in the sky to be, you know, clipping at all. So I'm pretty happy with where things are at. And then I'm just going to be increasing the contrast to push those out just a little bit more. So instantly we've gone from this to this. Things are looking a little bit more true to life. I think the temperature may be just down ever so slight or maybe increase, maybe maybe down. I'm not sure. We might leave it for now and we might come back, um, but more or less, I'm pretty happy with this initial little grade here. We're then gonna come here and we're gonna just add a nice S curve to add a little bit more contrast to our shot here. We're gonna increase those highlights ever so slightly. And then we're just gonna lift the blacks up just, actually no, we might not lift those blacks up. A little before and after. A little before and after is something I do like nearly every step of the way. I change one thing or quick before and after. Just this way, I make sure I'm not pushing or pulling anything too far or not enough. So I think things are looking fairly good here. Check the scopes, we've got nothing clipping, so nothing's touching zero and nothing clipping up here because nothing's touching one. 100. So that is ideal. I'm actually going to skip over all the rest of the curves and we're going to come into the color grading, the little color wheels and match. Uh, for now, we're going to add some blue into the shadows, but not too much blue into the shadows. We're also going to add some blue into the highlights and maybe some, maybe some orange into the midtones there. Turn that off, turn that back on. I'm not happy with this whatsoever. I don't know where I went wrong here. We might actually leave that to be honest with you. We might jump back into the curves. All right, let's go with the curves. Let's just go down it. I don't know, there's no need to make it more complicated. Let's just go down the little uh, the little sequence that Premiere Pro has for us here. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna come into the yellows and we're gonna desaturate that. I wanna kinda take that away from the sky and I also don't want it to be, I guess, anywhere else in any of these reflections in this tree back here. We're just gonna decrease, desatur ooh, desaturate and decrease them on a bit of a global scale, if you will. I think the oranges are more or less perfect where they're at, and I know there isn't much blue right now, but we're gonna increase the blues just a little bit um, because we will wanna add a little bit of blue here and there. Um, when we do end up, uh, I guess, finishing this color grade. So with the hues, I'm pretty happy with how things are looking. I mean, the colors of this shot are more or less gorgeous. Um, and also the luminance of all things. We are gonna come into the luminance versus saturation. Now, this isn't something I do on all my clips, but I really just don't want the sky to be any color. So I'm gonna click here. We're going to remove this one, and then I'm just going to drop this. So we're gonna drop the saturation. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna desaturate anything that is in this range. So this little range from here to here, it's gonna desaturate it, which is ideal. And now that we've gone from this to this, which in my opinion, we've more or less converted this from log to a uh, beautifully contrasty looking shot. I'm gonna come back up into the temperature here, and we're just gonna cool things off 
ever so slightly. I think things are looking fairly nice. So let's turn all the curves off, turn the curves back on. I think things are looking great. We can now come into the color wheels and match. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of uh, blue into these highlights here. So turn that off, turn that back on. I think things are looking great. And what we might do is we might go for the opposite in the shadows. I think this is where I went wrong last time because I want him to stay really nice and rich and orange, which is ideal. Um, and I already know exactly what LUT would have worked perfect for this, uh, but that's more than fine. We kind of want to work with things from the get-go here. And we might actually have to increase the orange saturation to make him pop a little harder. Okay, so I think things are looking fairly nice as they stand. I think we've got a really nice before and after here. We're gonna just add a little bit of a vignette and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna play around with a few little masking uh, techniques here. So let's just have a look at the clip. I think things are looking really nice. Um, I actually really, really like the color grade on this. So I'm more or less happy with where things are at right now, but I know we can make it just a little bit nicer. So what we've done here is we've just come to this drop down menu here and we're gonna add a Lumetri effect color. And then we're gonna have to come over here to effects and controls. And just a little last look at our Lumetri scopes. I think things are looking very nice. They're completely balanced. Nothing's clipping either top or bottom. And as you can see on the image, I think things are looking very, very nice. Nice. Okay, so over to effect controls. Let's close warp stabilizer. And just to make sure we're selecting the right Lemetri color here, this should be, yes, our initial grade. And then we've got our first mask here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little uh, radial filter, a little circle mask over here. Radial filter, I feel like I'm in Lightroom. Okay, radial filter, circle mask, whatever you like, just here. And we're gonna go over his eyes. Now, I don't want this to be too big and we're gonna feather the hell out of it just like that. We're gonna increase this just a little bit and then we're gonna come into basic correction and we're just gonna increase the highlights. Now what this is gonna do is it's just gonna increase the exposure on his eyes a little bit because they are quite dark and this shouldn't look too out of place. I'm just making sure because I'm, of course, Premiere Pro, you can't auto track masks, but he, his eyes pretty much stay in the same place the whole time. I think that looks fairly natural and good. I know it's not as refined as it could be. And to be honest, since we are just moving in one direction, uh, we could come in here to mask path and we could click on the mask, click on the mask. There we go. We put that over his eyes. And then what we can do is we can come to the end. We go one keyframe in, click on this mask. And then we're just gonna move that there. That adds another keyframe, move this keyframe right to the end. And now if we have a look, if we turn the mask on, Come on, okay, hold on. If we turn the mask on like this, that pretty much is locked onto his eyes the whole way through. So that just adds a little bit of uh, exposure on his eyes and as you can see, it does add quite a lot to our shot there. If we just turn that off and turn that back on. Yeah, it might be a little much to be honest with you. Maybe we can put this down to 0.1, um, just like that and turning it off, turning it back on. It does look a lot cleaner. Um, yeah, I'm very, very happy with this. The light doesn't look unnatural, which is exactly what we don't want to do. We don't want to make an unnatural looking shot, uh, but I think that mask was a huge success. So what we'll do here is we're going to add another Lumetri color effect like we did in the beginning. We're going to add another circle mask. And this time we're just going to go around his face and we're actually going to be inverting it. So we're just going to make sure none of his skin tones, especially in his face, just on his hand, just here, uh, touched. And then we're going to invert the mask, which now means we're selecting the outside of the radial filter, <laughs> the circle mask, um, instead of the inside like we were last time. We're gonna increase this feather even more, and then we're gonna start dropping the, uh, the temperature just a little bit. Now, nothing too crazy, and this should pretty much be on point the whole way. If we just turn this on, we can kind of go through like that. Yeah, that's more than fine. So that just adds a little bit of uh, coolness on the edge, takes away from a little bit of an orange tinge in this tin here. And more or less, guys, this is looking really good. I'm a huge fan of this shot. I think this is looking great. To be honest with you, what we might do, let's just have a look. Now, I know everything's color graded, so beware because what I do in these cinematic LUTs, I already have the conversion baked in. So what we can do, if you're shooting with, let's say, Rec. 709 already put on, if you're shooting with like S Tone or something like that, this is the way that I would go about applying a LUT. So if we apply it, you can see it's just way too much, but this is just more or less going to give us a nice look. We're just going to dial the intensity right back. And as you can see, it just adds a little bit more of a stylized touch. But if we turned this off and then we double click like this, we're pretty much already where we want it to be. Of course, we might need to increase the highlights here and we've got all the other masks added on here so i wouldn't worry too much about what it looks like right now we're just going to dial back the intensity ever so slightly 
And more or less, this is pretty much our color grade. So we've gone from this all the way to, oh, all the way to this. And I think things are looking very nice here. Let's just play back this clip one last time. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. This guy was easily a highlight from Egypt. He was the perfect model I could have asked for. And more or less, guys, that is my color grading workflow from start to finish. Now, of course, I know I already have a few videos like this on my channel, but the good thing about videos like this is every single clip is different. So every single clip requires a different Lightroom. <laughs> a different Premiere Pro color grading workflow. And as you saw in the beginning, I was a little bit lost diving into my color wheels first and not changing my curves, whatever the case. But now you just kind of go through, you make changes as you see fit. And uh, I guess you get a, a little bit of a result like this, but this is exactly how I color grade my footage. Like I said, if you guys do wanna check out my LUTs, they are linked down below in the description. There's a nice cheeky discount code that you can use at checkout. So by all means, go and check those out if you wanna use the colors and looks that I have in all of my footage. But anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you have enjoyed today's video, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're new around here, subscribe would mean the absolute world. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one.